All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Nitesh. I work at Acuity as a software engineer. I'm also an Argo CD maintainer, CNCF ambassador, and the release champion for Argo CD version 3.2. In this video, we're going to take a look at what are the new features, fixes, and everything that has went in Argo CD version 3.2. Before we get started, uh, we would want to make a huge announcement uh, for everyone. Now that 3.2 version is already out, 2.x versions of Argo CD will no longer be supported. So for example, if you're at version 2.14, 2.13, 2.12, 11, 10, whatever is it, those versions will no longer be supported, which means like, any fixes that you would want to cherry pick in version 2.x, they won't be there. All right, what I'm going to cover in this video is we'll be going through a couple of demonstrations of the new features that have been added. We'll be going through what are the fixes, what are the other notable changes that have been added in this release. So without any further delay, let's get started. One of the very important features that has got added in this Argo CD 3.2 release is the new deletion strategy for progressive sync, which we're going to have a demonstration right now. So if you're already familiar with progressive syncs, it is very simple. It's that if you have an application set and you want to deploy those applications in a specific order, let's say you have application one, application two, application three, and you want to make sure application one gets deployed first and then application two and then application three, you can do it with the help of progressive syncs. If you don't use progressive sync, all those applications are going to get deployed simultaneously. Now let's take a look at what is this new feature about. All right. So uh, if I go through my app set manifest right now, you can see that I'm using an application set right now. Um, sorry for that. I'm using a finalizer that is saying resources finalizer.argoc.argoproject.io. I am using a list generator here. Uh, if you see I'm using a list generator that has a couple of things, environment dev, environment prod, uh, and we are using this repository URL. We're, we're syncing at this path. So what is going to happen, the main thing that I want to mention here is we're using a sync strategy. Uh, we're using a strategy of type rolling sync, and we have uh, defined the steps here. So first the applications are going to be, all the application that have this label, dev, those are going to get deployed first, then the application that have labeled as prod, those are going to get deployed first. So if I try to apply this manifest, if I try to apply this manifest, you can see that now first the dev is getting deployed and now the prod is getting deployed. Why is this happening? Because we have used the progressive sync. So if I go to any application, you see that the progressive sync is healthy, it's the wave number one. If I go to prod guestbook, you can see it's healthy, it's wave number two, right? Now, there's a new field that I have added here, which is deletion order as a reverse. What is going to happen with deletion order reverse is that if I try to delete this application set, if I, if I haven't used that deletion order, all the applications would have been deleted simultaneously, right? But with deletion order reverse, all the applications are going to be get deleted in a reverse order of how they were deployed. So they were deployed, firstly the dev application was deployed and then the prod. But how we're going to work right now, if I try to delete the application set, the prod application is going to get deleted first and then the dev involved, and then the dev application. So if I come back here, you'll see right now. So if I, if I try to delete this application, kubectl delete minus f appset.yaml, you see the prod is getting deleted first. It got deleted, now dev is getting deleted first. So this is the new strategy that was added uh, by Kanigarana from Entwet. Shout out, shout out to her for adding this feature to the project. Now let's take a look at the, another feature that we're going to talk, uh, talk about, which is about which is about adding a title match filtering for the pull request generator. So if you're already familiar with pull request generator, what is it about? It's very simple that pull request generator allows you to create Argo CD application based on the pull requests that have been opened. So we used to have a bunch of filters like branch match. You can have certain filters. This time we introduced a new filter called as title match that's, that allows you to deploy applications only when PRs with certain titles have been opened. So if I go through my, I have a very simple repository PR generator demo. I have a bunch of manifest here, which is like a customization. Uh, and then I have a deployment. 
uh, and then I have a service that is exposing that deployment. What I'm going to do right now is I'm good, and this is my manifest that's going to be used. So if I if I if I show you right now from here, appset.yaml, you can see that I am using this application set and I'm using this filter called this title match here. So only those applications will be deployed that have this PR. Uh, I mean, if only those applications are going to deploy that have this PR, that have the PRs with a title starting with feet, okay? So if you see in, in my pull request, there are going to be two pull requests, the feet that starts with feature and we are changing the replicas to four. We have another pull request that is that is simply changing the readme file. We don't want this to be deployed because this is not something that we, this is a very minor change. We don't want to preview it, but we definitely want to preview our application of this that has changes based on this pull request. So I'm going to apply this filter right now. Uh, so if I say cubes still create my appster.yaml, you can see that PR1 awesome app has got generated. If I click here, you can see the four replicas are there. Uh, if I try to raise another pull request that starts with a feet, you know, uh, as a as a prefix, then a new application is going to get generated. Why the code didn't work? By because we were using, let me just show you really quick, because we were using the title match here as a filter here, which was this one. You can also use another filters like branch match, uh, but it depends on you. Let's move to the another feature that is that got added, uh, which was server side dev support in Argo CD CLI. So what happens is um, Argo, this, this PR eventually, this feature allows you to have a new server-side dev flag that users can use with Argo CD app dev command. And it's going to perform the diff operations using the Kubernetes diff uh, service dry run apply. So it's basically going to perform the diff operations using Kubernetes API servers dry run apply. That is going to result in more accurate uh, diffs of your application, how it used to be before and how it how it's right now. So if I go to Argo CD app diff, just click on our app diff, you will see a new flag has been introduced here, which is server side generate. And you can use this flag with minus sense local. This will send your manifest to the server for diffing. So in, in short, this is going to give you more accurate diffing and it's using the Kubernetes uh, API flag. Uh, so, so it's basically using the Kubernetes API servers dry run apply under the hood. Uh, now let's come to the other notable changes that have been added in this release. There have been a bunch of, uh, re there have been a bunch of things that have been added. For example, ability to pass authenticated user ID as headers to extensions. Uh, shout out to Alex G from Intuit for adding this feature. We can also get the commit server URL from the environment variables now. Uh, then there has been improvement in the developer guide of Argo CD. So if you're someone who is looking forward to contribute to Argo CD, a good sort of developer guide that has been modified a lot and has been written very well. Shout out to Regina from Octopus Deploy for that. Uh, then there has been a breaking change, which is about uh, that this, if you're using source hydrator, you can't use the root path for that. This is like a breaking change. Uh, and a bunch of new features, fixes have been added in this release. Uh, so if you're someone who's looking to Looking to play with this new release, uh, it's highly recommend to go through the release notes, the blog posts. All the links have been attached in the description, so it's going it's going to be very easy for you. But yeah, uh, that's it for the that's it for the video. And once again, a huge shout out to all the contributors, especially folks from Acuity, Intuit, um, Octopus Deploy, uh, BlackRock, and everyone who spend their time contributing to Argo CD version 3.2, and we're really looking forward to have more people contributing to the project. So once again, thank you for watching this video. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.